Okay guys, it's gonna be a quick video on how to clean your saw when you're done with a job. How often should you do this? It depends. If you're cutting in the rain and you're getting a lot of uh, sawdust and other debris stuck up in your cover and in the grooves that your chain sits in, you're gonna need to clean your saw more often. Typically every job, you're gonna wanna break this down and clean it real quick. This isn't a full detail clean, this is just a quick cleaning of your grooves for your bar and your, your uh, cover, and also blowing out your air filter. It only takes a couple minutes to clean these up and get your saw running as efficiently as possible. Here's the tools that you're gonna end up needing. Realistically, you don't need a socket and wrench. I just have these set up for each saw. So I have a larger size socket for uh, steels and then a smaller one for these Husqvarna's. Okay, it just makes it quicker to get the these uh, capture nuts off and get your cover off. You don't have to have these, I just think it's more efficient. You could just get away with using a scringe to get your cover off um, and then untension your chain. Toothbrush, really simple. I dip that in fuel most of the time to try and get all the junk out of um, the cover and behind it. A plastic knife made for painting. Really simple, super cheap, and you can scrape all the junk out of your cover with these really fast. Another tool is the box knife. Cheap, uh, you don't need an expensive one. Just something simple that holds one blade. Last tool you're gonna need is a grease gun, okay? There's a couple different styles of grease guns. Here's one that you just push down on, you load your grease, Take this cap off, load your grease in, and then you just push down in the grease point and it pushes grease into the bar tip. This one just has a little button in the back to be able to inject the grease into the tip. It doesn't matter which one you use, they're both efficient. I just ended up getting two so I could have one in my truck and one here when I'm doing my maintenance on my saws in my shop. So let's get started. We're gonna go ahead and take off the cover first after loosening these capture nuts and slacking out the chain. This is where just having a socket and wrench set up for your saw works much more efficiently than having to use a scringe. These Husqvarna's, the chain tension is in behind the bar next to the muffler. So we'll go ahead and slack all that out. Here's a tip for when you're working on Husqvarna saws. Make sure your chain brake is off before you take your cover off the saw. The reason for that is if you engage the chain brake and you try and take this cover off, it'll be very difficult to get it back on. If you accidentally pull your cover off and have the chain brake on, all you need to do is put the cover back on to the saw. It's not gonna fit all the way on, but just partially, and then go ahead and engage your chain brake to take it off and it'll it'll fix the issue there and you'll be able to get this cover right back on. Okay, we got the cover off. We're gonna go ahead and pull our chain off now. If you guys don't have a vise, I would suggest that you buy one. It's the easiest way to sharpen your saws um, by far than trying to put your bar up against something and just rotate the chain every tooth and sharpen. Put it in a vise. I'm gonna try and make a video for you guys on how to use a vise to hand file your chains. I can tell you right now that once you become proficient at hand filing, you're never gonna use a machine again to, to file your chains. It is so much faster doing it by hand than it is setting the machine up and having to go through each tooth and adjust the machine um, based off of how much of that tooth is left or worn down versus just going one tooth after another and hand filing. Okay, so let's take the bar off. Okay, now that we have the bar off the saw and our cover, we're gonna go ahead and clean these out. What you wanna have is a plastic container or something that can hold old fuel out of your saws and just put it in this container and you can use it uh, with a Scotch-Brite pad to clean your bars. It's, 
extremely fast and efficient for breaking down sap and other stuff that's gotten stuck on your bars. I would not suggest using a Scotch-Brite on a bar that you're worried about um, fading the paint on it if you have some sort of special logos or anything like that. I don't have bars like that, so this is what works for me. This will get most of the stuck on sap off your bar. Some spots you're gonna have to work more than others to get everything off. And typically, if you have some really stuck on sap, you don't need to get everything off. If you can feel it, it's raised up, you wanna knock that stuff off. But if it's nice and smooth, I wouldn't worry about getting every little spot off your bar. It's not necessary. The only reason you're doing this is to make your bar um, not get stuck as it's moving through the back cut or face cuts. You want it to have it as smooth as possible so it's not binding up. Okay, we got one side, I'm gonna do the other. Just scrub it down really good. See, I'm getting most of the sap off right here on the bar. That's good enough for me. I don't need it to be perfect, okay? Have a shop towel with you and just wipe your bar down. Flip your bar over and clean this other side here. You'll see this little oiler port right here. You wanna make sure that you clean that out. You just use a little piece of wire like this. You can get most of that stuff pushed out with just this. This is just a piece of fencing wire, I believe. Um, it's small enough to go through that port. Another way of doing it, which typically clears it all out without you needing a piece of wire, is to just use your utility knife. This is how you clean your grooves out. Take your bar, and insert your knife right at the tip and then just drag down. This saw is pretty clean as it is, but when they're really dirty, you'll drag out a ton of sawdust and oil and everything out of your, your grooves. Your chain's gonna glide a lot better. Now all you do is just take the tip of your utility knife Put it into that port and you can scrape all that stuff right out. Most of the time, as you drag the knife down the groove, it pushes all the sawdust and oil out of this port and it's just easy to just pick it right out. That's about it for your bar. You don't need to do much more here, so we'll go ahead and set this to the side. For your cover, this one again, it's, it's pretty clean. I try to stay up on it, but a lot of times you get debris caked in here, a bunch of sawdust and oil. Really, you don't need to get into every little nook and cranny in these covers. It's just not necessary. They're just gonna get uh, filled up with stuff again anyway, right? But do the best you can to get these, this piece right here. Just take your knife and clean this stuff out right here if it gets caked in there. Again, this saw is pretty clean, but once you get out there in the rain and you're cutting, this will be filled up with sawdust and you just want to take your putty knife, scrape it out. You tap your cover to knock out as much as you can. Some spots are really hard to get. They're really caked on. You can just use your scringe to get in there and break that stuff loose. Again, you don't need to get every port on here, you really just need to hit the big spots right here where the sawdust is being ejected and then in here around your um, your chain break area. Get that stuff out of there. See, putty knife takes it right out. Once you've cleaned up the inside of your cover, I take a little bit of fuel on this uh, cover plate on the outside and I clean that as well. I don't use the scotch right here. I just use a rag, dip it in some fuel, and then just wipe it down. This cover looks pretty good as it is, but this can get really nasty with sap and you can't see your gunning sights. So you wanna get this all cleaned up nice. I don't need to get every little bit out of here. I always check the dogs. If there's a lot of stuff caked into the dogs, I'll use again my putty knife to scrape 
the dogs out. These ones are pretty clean right now. So that's, that's it for the cover. We'll put that aside. Now we're going to the inside of the saw. Again, you're gonna get a lot of sawdust caked up in here. I just take my putty knife, quickly scrape that out. Again, this one's pretty, pretty clean as it is. You can also use compressed air to do a lot of this. The only issue with compressed air is if you're in a shop and you hit this with compressed air, it's gonna blow all this oil and sawdust all over your shop. It's gonna make a huge mess. So if you do use compressed air, just take it outside into the lawn and hit it out there so that you don't get all that in your shop. This is where you can use your toothbrush. Just dip it in some fuel. If you got a lot of sawdust caked in here where your oiler is, you can use the toothbrush to knock that all out, clean that up. Again, you can be as detailed as you want to. I don't go overboard on cleaning the saw because I know I'm just gonna go out there and it's gonna get caked again in uh, debris. I just try and hit up the main parts that need to be cleaned up. That's it. So that looks fine to me. That's good. Okay, we're all cleaned up. My uh, sprocket area here in the clutch is all clean. You could take some compressed air, blow these springs out right in here around your sprocket and clutch, and that'll clean that up real nice. That's about it for cleaning up this portion of the saw. We're gonna go ahead and put it back together and then we'll move to the air filter. Okay, also don't forget to grease your bar tip. Some of these bars do not have grease points or grease ports up here, and that just means you don't need to grease that specific bar. On longer bars, you're gonna have a little hole right here, right up towards the tip of the bar. You're gonna wanna hit that with some grease. Just one pump is usually enough. Okay, now that we got that done, we'll go ahead and put the saw back together and then we'll get on to clean the air filter out. Try and keep my work area clean as I go so I'm not getting a bunch of junk back in my saw that I already cleaned out. So just have a little dust pan and brush handy. One thing you wanna remember with bars is every time you sharpen, typically you wanna flip your bar over so it's upside down, okay? The reason you keep flipping your bar every sharpen and every other sharpen is so that it wears evenly on these rails. Um, if you never flip your bar, you're gonna end up creating flat spots on your rails, and then that's gonna cause issues with your, your saw starting to cut at angles and things like that. So it's just like rotating your tires. You wanna make sure you're rotating your bar every time you sharpen. I usually put my bar on first and then I put my chain on. Some guys will just put the chain on the bar and then put both on together. This always seems to be quicker and easier for me. I can just lay my chain in there. Sometimes on these saws you need to pull the bar forward so that it actually gets in there on the stud to push your cover on all the way. Hand tighten these Capture nuts first, then switch to your ratchet. What I do is I just snug it up. You don't have to make this tight right off the bat because we still need to adjust our chain tension. Okay, so it's just snug, that's it. Let's go ahead and tension this up. Okay, one thing about chain tensioning, you have to pick up on your bar or pick up on the back of your saw to get the proper tension. Although the drivers seem like they're in there, in the groove right now, watch what happens when you pick up on the back of the saw. Okay, see how it slacks out now? This is where you wanna adjust a little bit more to suck those drivers in just a bit so they're not hanging all the way out of the groove there. You can also alternatively just pick up on your bar just like that and then the drivers will fall out. You wanna suck them in just a bit, right around here, um, so that you don't throw your chain when you're out there on a job. And again, chain tensioning really is dependent on what you're doing with your saw. If you're just bucking firewood, you can have your saw a little bit loose, that's okay. 
It's when you start getting into limbing trees out or brushing out trees that you're gonna fall. You're gonna want the drivers to be in there a little bit more. When you're limbing, especially limbs under tension, it can grab your chain and actually pull it off the bar to the side like this. Well, when your chain is running at high speed, it'll flip this right off and into your leg or um, end up damaging your chain. So just make sure that you have the drivers in there a little bit further than normal uh, if you're gonna be brushing things out or, or limbing. Okay, let's check our chain tension. That feels real good. Okay, I don't have drivers sticking out of the bottom. The chain is nice and free moving. I have grease in the tip now. So this is how your chain should be running. I'm gonna tension this chain too tight just to show you guys how that feels and what it sounds like when it's when you got it wrenched down too much. Here's a chain that's way too tight. That feels terrible in the hands. It's not smooth at all. Um, it's really difficult to move. And what that does is it creates a ton of heat inside your saw here and your sprocket, clutch area, everything, uh, including your bar. It's just really inefficient. You're wearing your bar out, you're wearing your sprocket out, you're wearing everything out when you tension down your chains like this. Okay, so let's loosen it back up. Okay, we're back to being tensioned up nice. This is nice and smooth. Now we're gonna tighten down these uh, capture nuts here for the cover plate. Okay, now we're gonna move to the air filter. Okay, to get to your air filter here on the 395 XP, uh, this is a Husqvarna. Most Husqvarna saws are the same with these clamps. You're just gonna use your scringe to pry those off. There's two on the sides, two on the back, and this cover comes right off. Okay, so we got the air filter exposed. What you wanna do with Husqvarna's steels, really any chainsaw that you have, is put your choke on when you go to take your air filter off. And what that does is it closes down the carburetor so that all the debris, if you knock anything loose or there's stuff trapped under there you can't see, it doesn't go down into your carburetor. It stays right on top so you can blow it out. There's a little screw right in here on a clamp that you need to take off prior to getting this air filter to release. You don't need to take the screw all the way off, just loosen it up and then your filters will come right off. Here's the choke I was telling you guys about. It's kind of hard to see down in there. This is a choke on, this is a choke off. So you can see how that flap closes with the choke on and allows you to blow this stuff out without debris getting down into your carburetor. Whereas if you left it open and you had a lot of debris in there, as you took your air filter off, it would go right down into your carburetor. So again, put the choke on. Okay, simple to clean air filters. All you're gonna end up doing, first of all, examine it from the outside, take a look at it. This one's a little dirty, it's not terrible. Um, you're just gonna blow compressed air in here and clean these fins out. If this is super dirty, personally, I just take some soap and water, hot water, and I soak it in there, and then I swish it back and forth in a bucket. And then I put some clean water in, I do the same thing over again, and it cleans up the filter really nice. And I've never had any issues with my saws doing it that way. I don't know if that's something that manufacturer would suggest doing, but it works for me. Take some compressed air, just blow it through your filter. That's really about it. Okay, you guys can blow this part out as well, the carburetor area. Um, I don't think that's really an issue unless there's a lot of stuff caked in there. I'm just gonna go ahead and reinstall the air filter now, and then we'll get on to wrapping this up. Okay, another thing is your spark plug here. You're gonna wanna check that every once in a while um, just to see how it's doing. We'll go ahead and pull that off, and we'll take a look. Just use your scringe tool for this, really easy. Just put it on there and break it loose. Okay, here's the spark plug after we pulled it out. It's kind of hard to focus with the camera, but what you want to do is just look at the tip of that. If you got a lot of oil on that plug, more than likely you're running your saw way too rich. This one looks good. We're gonna go ahead and reinstall it and get the saw put back together. When you guys tighten your spark plugs back down, do not wrench down on these. You just need it snug. 
okay? If you wrench down on them, there's a potential you could break the plug off in there. I mean, you could strip out the port, which would be a big mess, okay? Okay, we're gonna reinstall the cover here, really easy. There's a little um, flap here. You wanna make sure you get that underneath your cover in the front, and then pop it down, and just snap all those clips back into place, and it's back together. Fox knife, a scringe, toothbrush, um, some sort of putty knife, plastic. You can use a metal one as well, but I usually just stick with the plastic ones. And a couple wrenches of sockets on them to get your cover plates off. It only takes a couple minutes, um, probably from start to finish, of cleaning down my saws after a job. A more detailed cleaning would be taking off your pull cord, taking a look at that, making sure that that's not about to break or frayed, and also blowing out all the cooling fins on the side there, which maybe I'll make a video on that later, um, just to show you how to get a little more detailed in how you clean your saw. But generally, this gets it done just fine. Break the saw down, clean your grooves out for your bar, flip your bar over after you sharpen, and then just quickly clean out your cover plate with a putty knife. Okay, grease the tip of your bar, take your air filter off, blow it out, inspect your plug. If it's something you're having issues with your saw running, it's kind of stumbling, uh, take a look at your plug. It tells you a lot about how your saw is running. If it's dark and oily, it's running way too rich and really that's just inefficient. You want to make sure you have that plug nice and clean again don't lean it out too far, you could burn your saw up, especially if you have it ported or any sort of work done on the saw. All right guys, I'll see you on the next video. Um, I hope that you guys got something out of this today. And if you like the video, please hit the like, subscribe button, and uh, I'll see you guys on the next video, God bless.